Hi, this is a short tutorial on taking an Illustrator file into After Effects and creating a short animation. It's kind of a beginner tutorial. Uh, it's not covering After Effects in any kind of detail, but it's really just kind of a quick start tutorial. So what I have here in Illustrator is a banner, let's say a web banner. And if I look at my layers, you'll see that I've divided up everything into layers. And basically that's what you have to do is whatever you do in Illustrator, you have to make sure that you have layers representing the different parts that you want to animate. So I have all these different parts created in layers. Uh, let's see there. So all of these are different parts of the entire file. So I save that out as a normal Illustrator file, switch to After Effects and in a new project, I will import and I will choose that file and when I open it um, in the options here I need to choose composition and very importantly I need to make sure that I choose layer sizes under the footage dimension section. Press OK and what it does is it creates a new composition the exact same size as the Illustrator file and if I double click on that composition you'll see here in my composition panel, I have all those same layers from Illustrator that have been transferred across to After Effects. And so now I can literally just start uh, animating. So what I want to do is ju just do something pretty simple. I want these little logos to drop down um, in a kind of random way. So I'll start with the first one, which is this uh, DTP logo. So I'm going to select that layer, press P for position. Um, I want it to come into position at about two seconds. So I'll position my playhead at two seconds, put the stopwatch on for position, which creates the first keyframe. I'll then backtrack a few frames. I want this to be quite a quick animation, so just a few frames. And I'm going to change the Y value so that this item is off the top of the screen. So if I scrub my playhead between those two keyframes, I get a little animation of it coming down. Now I want it to bounce when it comes down, just, just a tiny bit. So I'm going to zoom into my timeline using the plus key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to go forward one frame and then lift it up again. And then forward another frame and take this keyframe, which is its final resting position. So select it and copy Command C on the Mac, Control C on Windows, and then Command V to paste. So what I have now, if I go back to full view of my timeline, is a little animation that does that. Just a little kind of drop down and bounce. I'm going to take that same animation, so to select all those keyframes, I just click on Position. And I'm going to copy, so Command-C or Control-C. And then I'm going to go to the next logo and position my playhead at the same position as the Start keyframe for the DTP logo. I can use my keyframe shuttle here to go backwards and forwards from keyframe to keyframe. And then for Digital Logo, I'll press P, select position, and command V to paste. I'll select video logo, and P, and select position, and command V to paste. And I'll do the same for web design, sorry, web logo, and 3D logo. Now what has happened here is it's not only uh, pasted the y-axis, it's also pasted the x-axis, so now all the logos are coming down exactly in the same place. So what I now need to do is move them back over into position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these other layers so that I'm just looking at the digital logo. There it is there. And then I'm going to make sure that I select position so that all those keyframes are selected. Make sure that I'm on a keyframe using my keyframe shuttle. 
and then I'm going to drag. I'll hold shift to ensure that it constrains it to the X axis. I'll then do the same for the next one. Select position, start dragging. You always start dragging first, then hold down shift. Okay, and then web logo, position, show it, start dragging, shift. And then finally, 3D logo position into place. So now if I show all of those layers, you'll see that I have this animation of them all coming down together. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to stagger this so that they're not all coming down at the same time. So I'm going to select position for uh, the digital logo and I'm just going to drag the keyframes a little bit out of position so that we have a more random result. Okay, so if I play that back we've got that sort of effect. Let me play that back in real time. Okay, so they all come in like that. Then I want, just at the end of this animation, I want the, um, this graphic here to scale up. So let's go and find that layer. Here it is here. I'll press S for scale. And I'll put the stopwatch on, which is saying uh, that's what I want the value to be at that keyframe. I'll go back a few keyframes, or sorry, a few frames, and I'll take that scale down to zero. So if I scrub now, I've got that scaling up. I want it to scale up a little bit too much and then bounce back. So I'll go a frame forward, scale it up a little bit more, and then zooming into that keyframe, select the 100% scale, copy it, and go one frame forward and paste it. So basically now I have this animation happening. All right, now for the text, I want the text to sort of um, kind of come on using an effect. So I'm going to collapse down all of these layers so that I've got some space here. And then I'm going to go to the layer for mic. And I want to fade that in. So as the little logos come down, and that other graphic comes up. So at about that point, we're looking at about two seconds, 10 frames. I want this to be in position and written on. So I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna press T for, tra for opacity and I'm gonna put the stopwatch on to say I want it to be in that position at that point. And then I'm gonna go back a few frames and take my opacity down to zero. So it fades in. And now what I want to do is I want to apply an effect to that layer. So I'm going to right click on that layer, go to effect, and I'm going to go down to fast blur. Now the problem with this is in my effect controls, if I change the amount, you'll see that it's only being restricted to the constraints of that layer, which is a small area. So I need to add an additional effect. So I'm going to right click effect, and go all the way down to utility. You can't see that here because my screen recorder doesn't go down that far. To utility, grow bounds. Okay, and you need to put the grow bounds effect above the radi CC radial fast blur and then change your pixel amount to grow the bounds of that effect so that it goes to the edges of your document. So now with CC Radial Fast Blur, I'll put the amount to 100. I'll take the center target and I'll put it on the left-hand side of that text. And then I'm going to move sort of halfway between these two keyframes when it starts to appear. And I'll put the keyframe, uh, the stopwatch on to create keyframe for center and amount. I'll then go a little bit forward past the the opacity keyframe when it becomes 100 
and I'll take my amount. Oh, okay. Uh, let's just go back here. Um, okay, so I'm going to select this layer and press U, which shows me all my keyframes, and I'll go use my keyframe shuttle to go to the first amount value. That should actually be zero. Sorry, no, it shouldn't. It should it should be a hundred. Um, I'm incorrect there. And then I'm going to move a bit further on and I'm going to take my center target and put it to the other side of the text. And then I'm going to go a little bit further on and change the amount down to zero. So the text now appears. Let me just see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. All right, so that's that done. Now let's do the other, my surname. Uh, so here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fade it in. So as soon as that comes in, round about there, press T for opacity, put the stopwatch on, we can move a little bit further on. So we're locking 100% opacity and then going back, taking it down to zero. So that word fades in. I'll apply the CC radial fast blur. And I will put the center position just to the left there and the amount to 100. I'll add the grow bounds. Place that before and grow that effect. Okay. Needs to go quite far. All right, so we've got... that effect kicking in there and now what I want to do is put the stopwatch on for center and the mount and then move a little bit further on take the center value to the other side of the text and then even more further on take the amount down to zero okay, let's just play that back Let me play it back in real time now. Okay, I like that. So now let's take the last little bit of text, the strap line, shear design training. And this I'm just gonna fly in from the right. So I'll press P for position. And let's say that we want it to come to rest about there. Put the stopwatch on for position. Go back a little bit. And then take it off. Ooh wrong way let's take it off the right hand side and then what I also want to do is put um, motion blur on for that so that it's a little bit blurred as it speeds in so I'm going to click on toggle switches and modes so that I get the other screen here and here is my column for motion blur I'll put I'll click in that box and put the master switch on for motion blur let's just see what that looks like okay so the last thing I want to do is for these pieces of text, I want to bring them on in a different sort of way. So I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to go up to the top of my layer stack and I'm going to go to layer, new, solid. And I'll call this lens flare. And I'll set it to black and full comp size and OK. I'm then going to right click on that layer and go to effect, generate, lens flare. In the effect controls I'm going to change the lens flare to 105 prime and I'm also going to take the flare brightness down a little bit and I'm going to change the transfer mode or the blending mode so if you know Photoshop you know what blending modes are about. Um, here's the mode is set to normal at the moment I'm going to change it to screen which means that the lens flare stays but the black goes. So what I want to do is set the start of the lens flare over here. So I use that center target and I'll put the playhead where I want this to all start happening. So about there. I'll put the stopwatch on for lens flare and I'll put the stopwatch on, sorry, I'll put the stopwatch on for flare center and the stopwatch on for flare brightness. Take that down to zero. Okay, then I want to go to five seconds 
I want to set the oh not five seconds uh, let me just go back and find my keyframe so I want the flare to come up over a few frames not over five seconds okay so there it is it's come up but then I want over the balance of this time to five seconds I want to move it across to the other side here so I have the flare going across like that and then I want it to fade out so I'm going to go to um, the same position as the center keyframe and I'm going to set the flare brightness down a little bit and then go a little bit further on and take it down all the way to zero so what I have is a lens flare going across like that and off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these pieces of text appear as the lens flare goes over them so the DTP that is this DTP text layer here I'm going to press T for opacity put the stopwatch on and set it to zero and then move a little bit forward and set it to 100 so what happens is it's almost like the lens flare is revealing it then the next one is the digital text T for opacity stopwatch zero move a bit further on a hundred for video same thing move a bit further on a hundred then for web And finally for 3D. Okay, so if I play this back now, okay, that's pretty decent. And very quickly through an Illustrator file, let's watch it again. Okay, and then I'll make it say finish at seven seconds. So I'll go to seven seconds and I'll just take this work area end here and then I can just drag it to seven seconds or I can press N, which will end it. That means this is the only part that will be rendered when I render out a movie. So I'm just going to save this. I'll put it in my desktop. And then I'm going to send it to Adobe Media Encoder. So I'll go to Composition add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Okay, so um, it's come through to Adobe Media Encoder and here it is here. So um, if I want this to just be a web banner, probably the best format for me to choose is H.264, which is MP4. Then in terms of size, um, I'm going to click on this blue uh, text here under preset. And wait for it to connect up and um, we're going to set it to uh, 600 by 100 which is what the original size of the Illustrator file was okay and okay there it is there and then press OK and then I'm going to set it to save to my desktop and then press the start render queue and let it process okay and that's done so um, let's just get it playing Okay, let's play it once more. All right, so this is a little bit of a rushed tutorial, but it's a quick start to help you um, use an Illustrator file and create a quick web banner animation from it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.